Hello everybody. Hello YouTube. Hello art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados. It's me again, Miss M, and I'm back with yet another video. And we're back with yet again something Kubrick related, and this time it's Kubrick and Nabokov related. Uh, and I just want to say uh, welcome everybody and thank you for being here and thank you for being with me i guess a lot of you who are my regulars regular commenters and people i regularly interact with thank you for being on this journey with me this intellectual philosophical um maybe even in some ways artistic journey with me i appreciate all of you so very very much as you can see i've broken 700 subscribers i'm not at 1000 yet but i I'm confident that I will get there. Um, and today, what are we going to talk about today? Um, well, like I said, Kubrick and Nabokov related. I'm going to talk about that article that I mentioned in my last video that I did last night. Um, Lolita by Stanley Kubrick, Film Analysis, Shakespeare's Sonnets. Um, you seem to enjoy that, at least somewhat. And... Uh, I talked about an article on it up it up it it oh lord it's hard to pronounce uh Itilopolis press and I just wanted to cover it I hope this is a quick video I hope it doesn't take me too long to say what I got to say um and after I'm I'm finished with this video again food video coming again you know the Taco Bell artist and then yes finally uh understanding the shining part 18 so that's going to be my upcoming schedule. Before I get into it, let me do my church announcements. Uh, returning viewers, thank you for returning. N new viewers, thank you for being new. Subscribers, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate each and every single last one of you, all 702 of you. I had 694 subscribers last night. So overnight, I got eight subscribers. Again, for like a decent channel that's nothing for me it means a great deal so thank you all of you for being here um i appreciate it a whole lot and if you you know don't forget to like comment subscribe and share if you know anybody who might be interested in whatever i'm doing here i don't even know myself sometimes but you know you you all seem to know because you keep coming back and i appreciate it so much and that's that for the church announcements uh let me get into it let me get into it because I really want to talk about this article from Idilopus. Idilopus. Oh Lord, I can't do it. But Idilopus Press, again, by author and artist Julie Kearns. Now, this looks uh, so interesting to me. I cannot believe it uh, when I found this. So I, I had to cover it. I had to show you Julie Kearns' article. I don't know when this is from. There, It's not dated, or is it? Nope, but, um, you know, it seems like it's been here for a little while. Let me just read it to you. Let me just show it to you. And then y'all can discuss in the comments and add your um, thoughts, impressions, what have you. And by the way, I haven't read this article yet. I just skimmed it, saw the picture, read the, uh, read the t title, and I said, okay, this is good. This is something that I need to talk about, especially since I've been talking about Lolita lately. Um so it says the coincidence is it just that of nabokov's ape and kubrick's monkey this is interesting um and here is a black and white photo of some people um i would assume at a zoo if there's if 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 it's an ape uh, that they're looking at and it says go to toc for this film i don't know what that is which also has also a statement on purpose and manner of analysis and a disclaimer as to caveat emptor and my knowing anything authoritatively which i do not but i do try to not know earnestly with some discretion and considerable thought okie dokie so this is a 1946 photo that we're looking at here from uh, Look Magazine. It says in 1946, for a Look Magazine article, Kubrick took the picture above of, quote, how people look to monkeys in a cage, end quote. Okay. Um, 
and go ahead and look at the picture. I might even put it in my community post, save it and put it in my community post and put a link to this Julie Kearns article. And then it says down here underneath the photo, uh, this is a pure coincidence, but Nabokov stated multiple times that his inspiration for Humbert began with the story of an ape in a cage. Okay. Uh, and I'll read this. The, uh, this I guess this is Nabokov talking. Uh, the first little throb of Lolita went through me late in 1939 or early in 1940 in Paris, somehow prompted by a newspaper story about an ape in the Jardin des Plantes who, after months of coaxing by a scientist, produced the first drawing ever charcoaled by any animal. This sketch showed the bars of the poor creature's cage. Okay. Um, and then it says, this is Julie talking, No one has been able to find the above news story related by Nabokov, and I believe it's been concluded that the news story Nabokov described doesn't exist. But... Back in 1999, on Nabokov-L, I don't know what that is, but okay, uh, a wonderful bit of research was posted, and God love the person who dug deep and found it. Uh, may fate grant them a prime parking space daily. Oh, that's cute. Uh, what they found was that on the 5th of December, 1949, in Life magazine, there appeared a letter from, from an H... Humber Clark, responding to a story in the November 14th edition of Life on an ape named Cookie, taking photos from within its cage. Humber, Humber wrote, uh, Photographer Bernard Hoffman's Cookie was not the first ape to take a picture. Uh, my protogree, whose name was also Cookie, was an advanced shutterbug more than seven years ago, when an article appeared in This Week magazine, October 11, 1942. With the letter were a couple of photos, one of the first Cookie holding a Kodak, another of Cookie's supposed picture out of the bars of the cage. Yet another person, Seaborn Jones, Jr., wrote in to point out that on September 5, 1938, Life had published another picture uh, of a chimpanzee in a cage at a zoo, and it was holding a camera alongside a photo it had taken. What makes the above letter something to be taken into consideration is that on the opposite page of the letter in that 5th of December 1949 issue was a letter from Nabokov. Uh, sirs, this is Nabokov's letter, sirs, it may interest you to learn that the butterfly wings in the third panel of the Bosch triptych belong to a female of the common European species known, uh, now known as Maniola uh, Yurtina, uh, which Linnaeus described some 250 years after Bosch knocked it down with his cap in a Flemish meadow to place, to place it in his hell. Vladimir Nabokov. Oh, Lord, this, Nabokov was really quite something, wasn't he? Okay, uh, and then Julie writes, The head spins. There are multiple things of interest going on here in relationship to Lolita, some of which I discuss in, further in my analysis. But in this excerpt, I'm going to keep as the point of focus Nabokov's interest in the caged ape picked uh, a, uh, sorry, in the caged ape picturing the bars of its cage, and the coincidence of Kubrick having made in 1946 photographs from the supposed point of view of a monkey viewing people outside its cage. Okay. All right. This is interesting. Okay. Uh, which means Kubrick would have been the monkey. Okay, did you hear that? 
I'll read it again. The head spins. There are multiple things of interest going on here in relationship to Lolita, some of it which I discuss, some of which I discuss further in my analysis. But in this excerpt, I'm going to keep as the point of focus Nabokov's interest in the caged ape picturing the bars of its cage and the coincidence of Kubrick having made in 1946 photographs from the supposed point of view of a monkey viewing people outside its cage. Wait a minute. Which means Kubrick would have been the monkey, which is something that's mildly amusing when one considers he later does this film of a book that drew its inspiration, at least Nabokov insisted it did, from just such a caged and self-aware monkey picturing its predicament. No doubt the coincidence wouldn't have bypassed Kubrick. Interesting, no? Uh, Nabokov was likely aware of H. Humber's Letter to Life, as, an, as in another novel of his, the original of Laura. Humbert, Humbert is instead a Hubert H. Hubert, which would seem a play on H. Huber, who had written the letter referring to the first cookie. H. Hubert Clark is in the 1940 census, so we can be confident he wasn't a playful conjuration of Nabokov's. It may be that Humbert Humbert's name was inspired by H. Humbert Clark. Okay. All right. Uh, the sense of the cage, the prison, is not only important to Nabokov in Lolita, but also to Kubrick. Bars... Now listen carefully to this, y'all. Bars as of a cage are expressed a number of times in the film. We see them most severely in the stark, dark shadows that rule the hotel room from the night when Humbert first tries to slip into bed with Lolita. They are again severe, dominating the scene, when an ill Humbert receives a phone call from Quilty after Lolita has left the hospital, giving Humbert the slip. There are diminutive suggestions of bars in the wallpaper of the second floor landing in the Hayes household, and from place to place we see white picket fences that I think are also intended to be suggestive of bars. My essential, in my humble opinion, ex excerpt post on the cage prison in Lolita is on the startling and the cage, which discusses Nabokov's referencing Lawrence Stern's reflection on the horrors of imprisonment in A Sentimental Journey, and Kubrick perhaps also referencing the same in his choice of Dover, New Hampshire as a location. Okay. All right. So, like, what the hell is going on here? What in the what in the world is going on here? There's a lot going on. I mean, there's a lot going on. Um, you know, so it looks like at least you know a decade or so, maybe maybe closer to two decades before uh, Lolita was made from a book into a movie by Stanley Kubrick. There. There seems to be these weird coincidences going on with Nabokov writing about, you know, an, uh, an ape in a cage and Stanley Kubrick taking photographs from the perspective of an ape in a cage. Um, and my question is, I thought maybe this article would talk about it. Again, I didn't read this before I switched on the recorder. But my thought was that... Uh, Maybe they would talk about the apes in 2001. You, maybe Julie. I thought maybe Julie Kearns would talk about the apes in 2001 and how it might relate to this. Um, that that was one of my thoughts because, like, that's the iconic beginning of 2001, the apes and, um, you know, the monolith and the whole thing. Huh. I don't know. I don't know, but I'm thinking about it. So y'all uh, think about it too. <laughs> that's what I'm. That's what I'm urging you to do. So 
I guess this is about it that I have to say uh, about anything in this video for today. Like I said, this is going to be a short one. And I think I'm going to uh, basically just leave it at that for today. Not all of my videos have to be two hours long, you know. I can, I can do something crazy every now and again and, and, and do a video that's less than 20 minutes long. Yes, I can. So, um, I can't wait to, can't wait to, uh, see what you all have in the comments, what you think of this and what you think the possible implications are, uh, with regard to, again, m mostly with regard to Kubrickology and how he might have used any of these ideas in his films. Um, in what it, whether it's 2001 or any of the other ones, um, let me know. Uh, like I said, I love reading your comments. Don't always respond. Don't always have a whole bunch of time to respond. But I love seeing your comments. I love knowing that, again, that you, you feel compelled to take the time to write something. That, that means a lot to me. And so that's that. Uh, thank you again for watching, listening. Uh, I'm going to re reiterate my church announcements. Returning viewers, thank you for returning. New viewers, thank you for being new. Subscribers, thank you for subscribing. Uh, and all of you, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I will be back probably tomorrow with the food video. I just want to get it out the way. I want to say something about it. I want to talk it through because it's bugging me and when something's bugging me i can't put it down until i deal with it and and until it's dealt with or whether i deal with it or anybody else deals with it again thank you all those of you who helped uh you know you came on over you saw my stuff you decided to subscribe i appreciate that so much so that's it i'm not going to get mushy about it uh we are on the march we are still on the march to 1000 subscribers and I'm I'm toying with the idea of doing a giveaway um, once once I get to 1,000 subscribers. So um, you know I might do that. So with all that being said, I'll I, like I said I'll come back with the fast food photos, and then I'll work on understanding. And then after understanding, I'll do my first like you know. Um, art history chit chat video so that's that for today so until next time y'all until the next time when i find yet another reason to talk at you i'm gonna go ahead and bid you a bye bye so bye bye everybody <laughs>